All right, guys, so we ran a poll on Damage Control Customs Facebook page and on Georgia Humvee Facebook page, and essentially the poll was to determine whether we should make a video on what does it take to put together a VIC-1 intercom system versus how to insulate your Humvee. And as of this morning, it was a 52% vote for insulation and 48% for VIC-1s. I think Vic ones are more fun, so I'm going to do the Vic one. But because they were both so close, and it seems like everybody was interested in both videos, we'll actually go ahead and make both videos anyway. But today's video is going to be a general video on what does it take to put together a Vic one for your Humvee, for your um, I don't know deuce and a half or whatever you wanted to put an intercom system in. But very focused on Humvees because that's kind of what I know. Um, all the disclaimers apply. Um, I'm not an electrician. I'm not a comms guy. I'm not a Humvee expert. I'm a Humvee user, hobbyist, whatever you want to call it. I have fun doing it. I've been doing it for some time, so I have some knowledge in it, I guess you can say. And um, nothing can replace your TMs. So I'll go ahead and put the TM number on there, but go ahead and download the TM. It's very short. It's nothing big. Read it. It's good for you. Um, you know, I'll put the TM number in there, but if you just go on Google, type in VIC-1 uh, PDF P, uh, TM, it'll come up, but download it, have a copy for your own sake. Um, so we're going to start off with, you're going to need somewhere to mount your VIC-1 intercom and your crew boxes, but more importantly, your actual amplifier. So we're going to start over here, which is your radio tray. Um, there's all kinds of different versions of these. Um, the very common ones that you see is a single tray uh, with nothing underneath. And so let's talk about what's up here, what's down here. The very, very bottom is the leg extensions for those guys that have turbo home Vs and uh, their dog house is a little different. And therefore the, uh, the radio tray needs to sit a little higher. Otherwise, if you don't have a turbo Humvee, um, the trays that don't have the extension will work perfectly fine for you. If you don't have the turbo Humvee, but you run into this, you can buy this also because you can just unbolt the bottom extensions and you're good to go. Um, then you have this face plate right here, which is essentially where you would be mounting your Vic-1, your Vic-3, in our case Vic-1. Um, so you do want the radio trays that have this face plate here. If you don't have it, don't worry about it. It's really not a big problem to have because essentially your mounting brackets on your intercom are right here. And all you need to do is go to Home Depot, go to Lowe's, go anywhere that you can buy some aluminum, iron, angle brackets, whatever, and just run two of them parallel up here, matching these bolt holes from a height perspective and just rivet that on this or bolt it onto this and then bolt your amplifier onto that and essentially make your own little plate in the front. Um, they, too, they do tend to run more expensive if they have this because this is a little bit more rare. Uh, is it really that important? A little bit. I mean, it pops it out, so on and so forth, but I don't think it's very important. If you have a radio tray that's working for you right now, don't go out there and buy another one. Just go to Home Depot, go to Lowe's, buy yourself some angle iron and go ahead and put that on there. What do we have up top here is we have the MT6532 docking station. You don't need this. You don't need this. Um, I will be using this, but you don't need it. Um, essentially what I will be using this for is a power hub. I will be running my power sources from the docking station to my intercom and possibly other radios that I will put in my truck. But if you, if you wanted to power your VIC-1 from your docking station, which again you don't need, but if you wanted to, then you would need to get a power cord that would go from a 4 j one port of your docking station to the J508 port on your um, intercom. Let's make life simple. Assume you're not doing that, which is what most people will do. They will not be going from a docking station. Again, then the only thing you will need is the CX4721 power cable, which is probably already in your truck. And that would connect to the J508 port 
on your intercom. So let's talk about, um, let's go ahead and talk about your um, amplifiers. So um, there's the 1780s, which is essentially the first generation or first series, and there's 1780B, 1780C. Um, I know there's some variance, variances in them. Um, I don't understand all the differences, but as you can imagine, you probably want the later version. Um, so if I was you, I would try to grab a B series or a C series versus a Gen 1. Ironically enough, um, this Gen 1 that I have is the uh, test unit that I use for all the new equipment I receive because this is a very trustworthy one. I've had it for a long time, so I trust it a lot. But from an operation standpoint, um, I'm going to show you the very, very basic uh, easiest way to set this up that will work from an intercom perspective. Now, if you wanted to run it a little bit more complicated with different radios and such, then it's going to be a little different. But if you're simply going to install your amplifier to 1780 plus your crew boxes with some headsets, then this is the setting that you want. Obviously, you would want a toggle switch to be on an on position. We're not powered right now, so we won't be. You want to leave it on intercom only because that's the only thing you're using it for. You want to leave this on on and you want to put it on CDR crew. And finally, you want to toggle this to Intel only. And that will leave it on the most simplistic setting where it will work for um, the intended purposes being just as an intercom within the unit. So this is the main control box, the amplifier. It's a 1780 and um, there's three versions of this again. Um, you probably want to get the B or the C. I've had best luck with those. Then you have your crew boxes. On your crew boxes, I'm going to take this one because it's not plugged into anything. You want to put it also on Intel only, which is uh, what you've set it up on your uh, 1780. And as soon as you put it on Intel only, and you take one of your... And essentially, I call these the audio cables. And uh, what you would do is you would plug it into either side. Doesn't really matter. You plug it in, and, and I always tend to go on the left side. But you've got to line it up. And this one is a little banged up, so it's going to be a little hard to line it up. But essentially, well, let's try it on this side. This one is pretty banged up. So we're not going to be able to line it up on this one. But... We've got one that's already lined up here, and this one is a good box, so we can line it up on this side too. So you just got to line it up on that and then screw it in. You can't go in incorrectly, it won't allow you to. But essentially, you connect it to the crew box, and the crew box number actually happens to be the C. 10, 4, 5, 6, um, and these are the crew boxes that I'm showing you right here. There's different kinds out there, but the 10, 4, 5, 6 uh, is the particular crew box that I have here. And essentially, you get your audio cable connected to your crew box. It always helps to have a flathead screwdriver to get these tabs open, but I didn't bring one. All right, so then now we've got to line this up. with our 1780 and then we've just got to screw it in so now we've got our amp connected to our crew box all right we're gonna have to try this again we lost uh, video there but uh, where we left off was we connected our crew box to our 1780 and the crew box number is the C 10, 4, 5, 6. Um, that's the particular crew box that uh, we are using. And um, all we've done so far is we have connected the crew box to our 1780. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to connect the bailout cables. And the bailout cables, uh, the number is the CX8650 Bravo. When you get your bailout cables, uh, for the type that we're setting up, 
this is what the end is going to look like and this is what the cables are going to look like the cables are going to be in two different lengths one is going to be longer than the other and essentially the longer one is going to go to the left which i believe is the 803 port correct and when you look at your bailout cables essentially you're going to have um kind of shredded uh, but yet round with one exception one particular area is going to be flattened that flatten is the top part so you want to line it up straight push it in turn it to the right and that will lock it in you're going to otherwise be struggling with trying to find it uh, it took me a minute to figure it out but it's designed it's designed that way so your your thumb would fit in a flat area you'll slide it in you'll feel it click and then you slide it to the right so now you've got your bailout cable correctly connected to your crew box once you've got your bailout cable connected to your crew box you need to connect your um, headset to your bailout cables and this is the end of what the headset will look like and this is the end of the uh, bailout cable where it will look like and you'll see them they're opposite male female and all you have to do is simply connect them this is actually one of the failure points so sometimes when you don't have audio just jig this unplug it plug it back in you tend to fail here because you don't have a good connection another failure point here is the control unit the toggle switch um, this tends to corrode and um, you want to make sure that um, your headset isn't actually bad and, and it's not as simple as just your switch a lot of times all you really have to do is just toggle it a few times break out the corrosion inside and magically it will actually start to work again uh, worst case scenario you can open it and clean it up um, and um, and uh, get it to work again from there another failure point uh, is if you're getting audio but you're unable to speak maybe your mic is bad or maybe you're just not plugged in make sure it's plugged in uh, and you don't have it backwards and your audio should work at that point so what do we have so far is a mic that's connected to the headset a headset that's obviously already connected to your toggle switch which is connected to your bailout cable which is connected to your crew box which is connected to your 1780 amplifier um, when it comes to mounting so essentially right now we've got a working unit assuming that it's powered on but essentially we've got a working setup right now now we need to mount it on our system or our humvee or our deuce or whatever it is that we plan on mounting it to um this is where people you know need to spend a little bit of time thinking about it is where are you going to place your crew boxes that's going to determine the length of what i like to call the audio cables however they're not called that it allows you to go from your crew box to your amp or from crew box to crew box um, and you need these cables but before you buy these cables you kind of need to determine where your crew boxes are going to sit so you know what length to get this is how i like to do it i like to set up uh, my 1780 amp on the right side of my radio tray faceplate I like to put my driver's crew box on the uh, left side of the faceplate. I like to put another crew box on this side for the right front passenger. Um, and what I do is I take this uh, CX, what do we say? This was 4721? No, 4723, sorry. The 4723 cable, which is what I call the audio cable. Uh, I like to take one of these, the shorties, and go from the, the 1780 to the crew box for the driver i like to take another one go from the 1780 to the crew box for the right front passenger however then what i like to do is do an l shape um, and essentially the way this would have been set up and this is actually incorrect compared to how i would have done it normally uh, but it doesn't matter but es essentially this would have gone okay
Um, a little bit different. Again, I would have done it just a little bit different, but you would get in point here. Essentially, I would go from the 1780 to the driver's crew box on the right side. Then from the left side, um, if I wanted to, uh, I would run this um, on the side um, of the tunnel all the way to the back. And then I would put a crew box in the back. And then from there, I would run to the right rear passenger. So I would do an L shape that that way um, and because you can daisy chain the crew boxes from one to the other to the other the only disadvantage in that is that all of the other three crew boxes are set on the same station as this one um, the driver's one um, and that's important if you wanted to have a commander box a commander channel whatever you want to call it um, but for our purposes that's probably non issue it's probably too far um, into it than, than is needed um, so let's go ahead and recap real quick what do we know uh, we know we need our training manual so go ahead and download the training manual go on Google Google Vic one intercom PDF TM you'll come up or if you need the actual number it's TM 11 5 8 three zero three four zero one two that will give you the TM on Vic one you can download it read it you will have more accurate information than what I've shared everything that I've shared is intended to kind of bring you up to speed and get you started not intended to be all-inclusive you need a radio tray it doesn't really matter which one you have um, you can make your own I wouldn't do that you can go out there and buy a basic radio tray that doesn't have the face plate and just get angle irons and run them in the in the back uh, to match the four bolt holes that are going to be behind your 1780 and mount them that way or you can buy the little bit more expensive one that has the face plate for the vix and go ahead and mount it onto that that's your radio tray you're going to need a power cable that is probably already in your truck if it's not it's a cx 4721 um, you can buy that you basically run it from your um, starter right between uh, the firewall where your battery box is underneath the truck uh, you run power from your starter and uh, so that's the power which goes to the J508 port uh, 508 port um, then you need audio cables that uh, you're gonna run from your 1780 to your crew boxes uh, you need to figure out the placement of your crew boxes so you get the right length of the audio cables then you're gonna need your bailout cables then you're going to need your head headsets you can set up a single station which kind of doesn't make any sense because it's an intercom or you can set up a two station four station six station whatever is appropriate for you um, just make sure um, you read the TM you buy the correct items spend the money and buy um, especially if it's your first one you don't have spare parts spend the money and buy tested items or buy from sources that are willing to accept returns um, you can find them cheaper on eBay, but you're absolutely rolling the dice on items that are not tested. Um, and you don't want to be in a position where you barely understand the system and you can't even tell if it's a user error or a product error and you're stuck in a bind between the buyer and the seller. Um, so my recommendation to you is either buy items that are already tested or the seller is willing to accept returns. Or if you're going to gamble with items that are not tested, make sure you have a friend that has a system that works um, and he or she can help you test it out. Um, if you're interested in having me build you one, I can. Uh, the point of this video is to help you build your own. Um, if you don't wish to go through the troubles, feel free to contact me and I'll build you one. Uh, but I would much rather see you build one for yourself. If you have any questions while you're building it, um, feel free to contact me. I'm not help support, uh, but um, I'm always happy to help a little bit. And, um, and I'm actually always excited to help people. Or if you're local to me and you've bought one, feel free to come by. We'll, we'll hook it up to uh, the different units that I have and see if your particular unit is working or not. And I actually just did that not too long ago with a gentleman that's very local. And uh, we figured out that, uh, I'm trying to remember if it was his, yeah, it was his 1780s that wasn't working, but everything else in his system was working. His crew boxes, his cables, his bailouts, his headsets, they were all working. But unfortunately, the two different 1780s that he had, neither one of them were working. Uh, but we quickly found him another 1780 and got him up and running. 
All right, well, feel free to correct me. Uh, feel free to contribute uh, and teach people how to do it more um, correctly, I guess, than I have taught them. And uh, have a good day.